All right, guys, we're jumping into this dryer. So the customer said they bought a brand new heating element. They put it in, still no heat. Um, so now I'm taking a crack at it to see what's up. And uh, I thought this would be a perfect video opportunity because as a consumer, as a customer, uh, maybe watching some YouTube videos, kind of like this one, trying to do it yourself. Sometimes it doesn't always go to plan. You can't figure it out. So uh, let's identify on this customer Seemingly, he said he thought maybe he didn't hook it up right, and that's why it wasn't heating. Well, I can tell you just by looking at this, everything's hooked up right. I haven't touched anything. The one thing I can tell, I can tell this looks new, this looks new, this looks brand new, but this does not look new. It looks like maybe that was transferred from the old one to the new one, and I can tell you a lot of the times, this is the issue. These will uh, short out and allow this to get way too hot and burn up heating elements. So this could be the issue. Um, this is brand new. However, uh, could be that this could have tripped. So this is your safety switch. This will cut the power if this gets too hot here, at least it's supposed to. Um, so it could be that this old one just heated up way too hot and tripped this. We'll find out. Let's grab the multimeter and figure out what's going on for this guy. All right, very first thing we're gonna do is get our multimeter. You can hear, we've got continuity. That's what we're gonna be checking for. We're gonna start at the top. Make sure our first safety switch here, there's no continuity. Okay, so this number one is the reason why it's not heating, but, but, to just replace this or fix this, I can show you a trick for fixing this so you don't have to buy another one. Uh, that's not gonna solve the problem because this trips if this gets too hot. A Couple of reasons it'll get too hot. The first is this piece down here I was talking about, it fails and allows this to get too hot. And that's the, well I won't say it's most common because the other issue is just as common, but the other issue is that if you don't have airflow See, air gets sucked up in here, goes inside with the clothes, comes out right here and then out the back of your dryer. If this is clogged up, this is your internal ducting right here, then the heat backs up, same kind of thing. Then this gets too hot and can trip it. And so those are the two most common things we wanna look for. Is it this piece here or is it the internal ducting here? So underneath, on the front side of this dryer where you pull out the lint trap, there's two silver screws. I've pulled those out. We're gonna open this up and see what this looks like in here. See if there's a huge blockage. Most people never access this. They don't know to access this and clean it. And most servicemen will never touch this. However, when I work on something, this always gets cleaned whenever I'm in here working on something because most of the time it is the problem or could cause a problem and I consider it preventative maintenance as well. So let's take a look and see what we've got. Okay, so really not that bad. You've got some buildup here that probably was like cutting it down a little bit. But there's really, this really isn't bad compared to what I've seen where stuff just falls out and it falls out and it's completely blocked. So I would say this is not the problem. We're gonna clean it anyway, uh, but this was not the problem. So that's gonna lead me to this piece right here is gonna be the issue and that's what I'm gonna replace. And then we're gonna run it, test it real good, run a few loads through it, but uh, I come back to either the new kit didn't come with one um, or uh, for some reason it, it just got transferred and didn't get put on, but we're gonna replace this piece right here. This is a high limit thermostat. If you're looking online, they're all pretty much the same. High limit thermostat, uh, this is called a thermistor. This is a thermal fuse, and then this is a completely separate thermostat for the auto dry, auto sensing. Okay, and a lot of times they come in a four kit. You get all four of these pieces, you can get them on Amazon or your parts supply place, places for, you know, 20, 30, 40 bucks, just depends on who you buy from. All right, real quick, we know the, the first issue is this guy right here. We verified that it has no continuity, so power is not able to run through this. Now, anywhere else, anybody else would tell you you need to replace this. You don't, unless you've done this before. Uh, I won't do this more than once. I've never had to do it more than once. It always has worked for me in the last seven years. It's never been a problem. A couple of things that you can do. 
it's nice and flat. Most of them are like this. Now what you can do is inside here, there's a little metal plate. And when this reaches a certain temperature, it bows and breaks the connection. Well, you can reset that by essentially whacking this and allowing that plate to flip back the other direction and making the connection again. And you know, some, some videos will show you throw it on the ground and stuff. I don't really like to do that. I have it bounce all around kind of out of my control. So I have one of these little, little grabbers here. And if I didn't have one of these, sure, you could bang it on the ground. But this is a lot more accurate. I just take it like this. I'm gonna line it up on the ground and whack it like that. I get it in one shot every time. And so we'll grab our, and I think you can see here, we'll scooch in a little bit. You see what we're doing now. Take this. Now we have continuity. So it's reset and it's ready to be put back on. So there you go, save you 10, 15 bucks right there. Don't have to buy those all day long, so we're gonna put this right back up. Okay, so now we're back on. Now based off of the testing that we did here, let's go ahead and verify everything else. Make sure you can still see me. Yes, you can. We're going to check top, bottom. Just like I thought, yep. There is continuity through the entire coil. We're also going to make sure it's not shorted out. Make sure it's not shorted out around it in here. And that's all good. Let's check this. Here. It's just important. Double check everything. Let me check this guy real quick. Okay, it's all good. All right, so here's what the new one looks like. And based off of this and the way that looks, that looks factory. Uh, I'm going to say that's probably what the issue was here. The, the only other thing that can also cause this, how I mentioned the blockage here can cause the heat to back up and overheat this. Same thing can happen if coming out through your house and ventilation to where it blows outside of your house. If that's all clogged up, that can also cause the same issue as if this were all gunked up in here too. So it could also be that something with the house and not with the unit at all cause this to trip up here. So just something to take note of, but in this case, I am fairly certain this is the issue. All right guys, so we have finished up on the back here. I've got everything hooked up to power, so we're not gonna get too close back here now, but we're hooked up. I've got the new part on, everything's put back together, everything's in place. I discovered something, had to actually call the customer and ask them about it. Um, and so up here, as I got ready to try it out, I kicked it over here, hit start, nothing happened, okay? I also noticed now there's no click on that, so that's like stuck. So when I come back over here, so I believe that there's So there's some kind of like stuck something up here. And so I called him and asked him about it. And he said, don't worry about that. I've got, I know how to handle that. I'm, I don't want to, I don't want to fix that. I don't want to pay for that. So he's got some way of messing around with this, I guess, to make it work. Um, you know, if I were refurbishing this to flip, I would absolutely get in there and fix that. However, customer doesn't want me to, and I understand that we're on a budget. So you can imagine how big of a pain in the butt that would be. Um, now, when I charge somebody a consultation fee, I call it a consultation fee because I'm going to come out, figure out what the problems are, consult with you on the best possible way to fix that within your budget. And essentially that first 30 minutes of being there and checking things out, I'm going to try to fix everything as fast as I possibly can. And uh, hopefully no parts are needed. So this is a perfect example of that. Um, I have worked it out so that I could bring this dryer back here to my shop. 
do the videos and all of that while I fixed his issue. Um, so, you know, if I had gone to this customer's house and we had had those heating element issues and I weren't doing the video, I could have knocked that out in 10, 15 minutes pretty easily, which would have left an additional 10 to 15 minutes or maybe even 20 minutes where I would have uh, time to work on something else. So that being said, I'm not charging the customer for going in and completely refurbishing this timer. Um, I'm one of the only techs, as far as I know, that can refur refurbish timers, excuse me. And I do that, uh, that's kind of a self-taught trait if you've ever worked on a pinball machine, it's very similar. Uh, I used to take iPhones apart and swap out screens and stuff, so very familiar with the little pieces. But anyway, um, you know, like I said, had I been out to the customer's house within that 30 minutes, I would have fixed all the issues and that wouldn't have cost you anything because that's just a skill that's not a part and that's what I bring to the table. So. Anyway, back to our heating issue now. Now that this appears corrected, you can look down that hole and see that heating element is working perfect. And so what you'd want to check from here is just make sure that after about three, four minutes, once it gets up to temperature, it's going to go ahead and kick off and cycle through, meaning that this part down here, the one we replaced, is actually doing its job. And it is, it does, I've watched it. It cycles through just fine. Once it gets uh, nice and hot, it shuts down. And then once it needs to, it kicks back on. So good to go. Customer didn't need a new timer. Customer um, just needed essentially one part and another little part reset. So on top of that $95, that little part uh, is probably a five, $10 part, if that. And my markup is next to nothing. Uh, just simply for me carrying the part and having it on hand, uh, I charge 20% on top of my cost and I cap out at 20 bucks. So I'm never going to charge somebody more than $20 of what I pay, you know, so if it's a, uh, <clears throat> if it's a $10 part, I'm going to charge them two bucks. No big deal. Uh, anyway, that's it on this dryer. Hopefully this video helps somebody out. If you are having these issues, uh, I have a video that goes through how to refurbish and how to fix that issue with that timer. If you're interested, you can look back through my videos and see how I did that. Um, anyway, that's going to be it. I do appreciate you taking the time to watch my video, and I hope you found some useful information in it. Thanks. You guys have a great day.